When someone starts to talk to you about station wagons, most likely what's going to pop into your head are the type of cars that your dad or granddad used to drive in. But these days, station wagons are cool, like this Mercedes-Benz E450 all-terrain and this Volvo V90 cross-country. And in my opinion, I think that these two are better than their SUV counterparts. So let's go for a drive and I'll try to explain to you why I think that. Starting things off in the Volvo V90 Cross Country, the big difference with this 2022 model year is that it now has a mild hybrid powertrain. It's not the type of hybrid powertrain where you can drive on electricity alone for brief periods. Instead, it's the type where the integrated electric motor just helps the engine with a little bit of extra power and, of course, fuel economy. It still has a 2.0-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine, but instead of a mechanical supercharger, it now has an electric supercharger, as well as the electric motor. The electric supercharger works the same way as the old mechanical supercharger did back in the T6 engine. It still helps the turbocharger build boost, and primarily it's only at low RPMs or when the turbocharger isn't up to its correct boost threshold. However, the big difference is that this has far less parasitic draw than the old mechanical supercharger. And of course, if you need a sudden burst of acceleration, that electric motor is always there to help the engine until the turbocharger gets into its correct boost threshold and takes over and then provides the bulk of the power. Speaking of which, the total system output is now 295 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. That is a little bit less power than the old T6 engine, but it is more torque. Also, this is the only engine that you can get with the V90 Cross Country. You cannot get any other engine, no B5, no T8, it's just a B6. Moving to the Mercedes now, you also get a mild hybrid powertrain, and just like in the Volvo, you cannot drive it on electricity alone. But where you get a four cylinder in the Volvo, you get a six cylinder in this Mercedes. It's a three liter inline six with a single turbocharger. But just like in the Volvo, it has an electric supercharger and an electric motor helping it out. The total system output of this Mercedes Benz E450 wagon is 362 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. This is one of my favorite engines, not just because it's a six cylinder, so it's inherently very, very smooth, but it's also very powerful. And even at low RPMs, it is really responsive. When you're just cruising around town, the automatic transmission likes to keep the RPMs at around 1000 to about 1300 RPMs. And even at that low of an RPM, you do not feel the vibrations of this engine throughout the car. That's just how smooth it is. It almost feels like as though you're driving an electric E450 wagon. But while it's not an electric Mercedes wagon, at least not yet, this inline six engine can return some pretty impressive fuel economy numbers. In the city, it is rated for 10.6 liters per 100 kilometers, which is the exact same city fuel economy rating of the Volvo. And that has a smaller four cylinder engine with less power. But of course, on a highway, the V90 Cross Country gets better fuel economy with a rating of 8.1 liters per 100 kilometers, whereas the E450 All-Terrain manages 8.4 liters per 100 kilometers. Not too far off though. The engine in the Mercedes can achieve these impressive fuel economy numbers because of the more advanced mild hybrid system. Both of these cars have smooth auto start stop features, but in the E450, it'll shut off the engine just before arriving at a stop. 
the Volvo only does it once the car comes to a complete stop. As well, if you drive the Mercedes in eco mode and you take your foot off the throttle pedal, the car will coast with the engine off. This allows it to go further as there is no engine braking to slow it down. Of course, the engine will immediately turn back on as soon as you touch the throttle pedal or provide enough braking force. The Volvo V90's mild hybrid system cannot do this. As for shifting gears, of course, both of these cars have automatic transmissions. In the Volvo, it's an 8-speed automatic. In the Mercedes, it's a 9-speed automatic. When just commuting to work and driving like a civilized person, both of the transmission shifts very smoothly and they're pretty much forgetful. However, if you decide to drive a little bit more enthusiastically, let's say, it's the automatic transmission in the Mercedes that's a little bit faster to respond to your inputs, whether you just stab on the throttle or use the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. This Volvo does not have paddle shifters, but you can take over shifting duties if you change the gear selector into M and then change it side to side to move it up a gear or down a gear. It's very unintuitive, so best to just leave it in normal auto. As for the braking and handling dynamics of these station wagons, they both feel pretty much the same when it comes to braking. However, another big change for this V90 for this 2022 model year is that it now has brake by wire. It was changed to this system so that it can better integrate with the automatic emergency braking as well as the mild hybrid powertrain and the semi-autonomous driving system. However, what you really need to know is that the brake pedal feels exactly the same as the old hydraulic system, even though it is now pretty much all computer controlled. And around twists and turns, because both of these station wagons are quite a bit lighter than their SUV counterparts, they are a little bit more athletic around corners than the XC90 and the GLE. Between these two station wagons, of course they both have all-wheel drive, However, it's the Mercedes that feels a little bit more enjoyable to drive on a twisting and winding road. And that's because it has a rear biased all-wheel drive system. The all-wheel drive system in this Volvo is more front biased. So at the very limits of adhesion, it tends to want to understeer a lot more than the Mercedes. In the Mercedes, especially in Sport Plus drive mode, you feel the back end wanting to rotate the car a little bit more than in this Volvo. So that just makes it a bit more enjoyable. There's just one thing that I don't like about the handling dynamics of this E450 all-terrain, and that has to do with the steering feel at highway speeds. It is just way too light. It doesn't give you any confidence whatsoever. However, you can change it. If you select individual drive mode and just have all the other parameters on eco or comfort, and then the steering on sport, that does fix the problem. As for going off the beaten path, both of these wagons have off-road drive modes which will raise the air suspension, if equipped, and adjust the throttle, transmission, all-wheel drive system, and stability and traction control programs for the best possible traction. Both wagons also have downhill descent which is like cruise control but for slow speed off-roading. While neither of these wagons were designed to tackle the Baja 1000, they are just as capable as their SUV counterparts. When it comes to the ride comfort, both of these station wagons can be equipped with air suspension. The Mercedes does have it. This particular V90 demo vehicle unfortunately does not have it. So between these two, of course, it's the Mercedes that has a more plush ride over rough roads. However, I'm not saying that this V90 cross country is uncomfortable because it is still very, very comfortable. It's just that the Mercedes is just a little bit more comfortable. However, the seats in the Volvo V90 Cross Country are a bit more comfortable than those in the E450. Both of the cars are available with massaging seats, but it's the way that the V90 seats contour to your body that make them more comfortable on longer journeys. On the inside, these two wagons have pretty similar interior dimensions. The Mercedes has a tiny bit more headroom across both rows and has about a quarter of an inch more rear legroom while the Volvo has about half an inch more front legroom. Compared to their SUV counterparts, they are a little bit smaller, of course, but not by that much. As for cargo capacity, 
The Mercedes E450 wagon has less with the second row seats up at 640 liters, whereas the Volvo V90 Cross Country has 714 liters. With the seats folded though, the Mercedes has 1,820 liters, while the Volvo can swallow up to a maximum of 1,517 liters of luggage. As well, if you find yourself in a pinch and need to carry a total of six passengers, excluding the driver, the Mercedes-Benz E450 wagon has two extra seats under the trunk floor. These are rear facing, so kids can make funny faces at the cars behind, and they are very, very small, so they should only really be used by little kids, and not tall 6'4 adults like myself. And not to be outdone, the V90 does not have a third row under the trunk, but it can be equipped with integrated child booster seats in the second row. That's probably something that will be used a lot more by families than the rear facing seats. Starting with the pricing, this particular Mercedes-Benz E450 demo vehicle is the 2021 model year, and it had a starting price of $80,900 Canadian. The 2022 Mercedes-Benz E450 all-terrain wagon received a slight price increase of $800, so now the starting price is $81,700 Canadian. The 2022 Volvo V90 Cross Country wagon has a starting price of $65,950 Canadian. But of course, these demo vehicles have options on them, which did increase the prices to $94,100 Canadian for the Mercedes and $77,450 Canadian for the Volvo. They're not fully loaded, but pretty close to it. There isn't that much difference between these two cars when it comes to gadgets and gizmos. They are both available with a wide range of advanced safety and driver aids. They both have semi-autonomous driving assists that work very well on highways. And they both have the same convenience features, such as soft leather upholstery, heated, ventilated, and massaging front seats, panoramic sunroofs, power lift gates, head-up displays, surround view cameras, and so on. But for their respective model years, both of these cars received a few interior updates. The Volvo, for example, has a touch-sensitive sunroof control. You just have to swipe to open or close the sunroof or the sunshade. The mild hybrid B6 models also received the same gear selector that was once exclusive to the plug-in hybrid Volvo T8 models. Pull twice on it to engage drive, push twice on it for reverse, pull once or push once for neutral. Super simple to use. As well, there is no more drive mode selector. In fact, there are no more drive modes at all in the Volvo, apart from the off-road mode, which is accessed through the infotainment system. Another change for the 2022 Volvo V90 Cross Country has to do with the infotainment system. It is now an Android automotive based infotainment system and it looks very similar to Volvo's old Census infotainment. So if you're used to that one, I think you'll find this new one pretty similar to use and to control. It has fewer sub menus so it is easier to navigate around but you can still access the settings by a little icon on the bottom right and for all of your apps you can access them on the bottom left. One of the best things about this new infotainment system is just how fast it loads on cold start. The old system would take approximately 30 seconds to 45 seconds to boot up whereas this one takes less than 10 seconds. It is much much faster. However, just like last year's model, the climate controls are still integrated into the infotainment system, so it can be a little bit distracting trying to use the touch controls to change the temperature when you're driving. However, you can use voice controls to change the temperature if you choose to. Turn on the heated seat. Sure, turning on the seat heater for the driver. Another change is with the driver display right in front of me. It still is digital, just like last year's model. However, the graphics are brand new, but it's not very customizable. You can either have a map or just a black screen in the center. And that's about it. In the Mercedes, you have much more customizable options. In the Mercedes, you also get a new infotainment system. It is now the MBUX infotainment, but it's the first generation, not the second generation that was introduced for the Mercedes S-Class. If you are interested in the S-Class review, check it out up here. 
But getting back to this MBUX infotainment, it is pretty simple to use. I mean, it can be a bit daunting at first if you've never used a Mercedes-Benz infotainment system before, but once you start fooling around with it, it's very simple. You can control the infotainment by the touchscreen itself or by the touchpad right here on the center console. The last Mercedes Command infotainment system had a rotary knob. This new touchpad is very straightforward to use and it has haptic feedback so you know exactly when you select an item. You can also control the infotainment by voice controls or you can try to control it by these capacitive touch buttons on the steering wheel. I say try because these are very finicky and honestly very distracting when you're trying to drive. For example, if I try to swipe left, then 5 out of 10 times it'll think that I am swiping down or up. I really hate these new capacitive touch controls. I much rather prefer the old steering wheel controls with the Blackberry style touchpads and individual physical buttons. Other than that, the rest of this interior looks exactly the same as it did in last year's model. The steering wheel is new, it's now the same one that's used in the Mercedes S-Class with again these horrible capacitive touch buttons which I hate. But one thing that I will say is that if you are specking an E450 all-terrain, please get it with the open pore wood trim. This gloss black, it just really highlights dust and fingerprints and scratches. This car has less than 4,000 kilometers and I can already see all the scratches right around here on the center console. So I'd hate to see how it looks after 40,000 kilometers. On the outside, the Mercedes received a few new styling updates. The biggest being the new headlight design that aligns it with other Mercedes-Benz vehicles. But it's the Volvo that turns more heads. The design language looks as fresh now as it did four years ago when this generation of the V90 Cross Country was introduced. But between the two of them, they are both more stylish and interesting to look at than the usual crop of luxury SUVs. So while both of these station wagons are pretty similar, they both have a few distinct differences. The Volvo V90 Cross Country primarily feels like a more family-focused vehicle, whereas the Mercedes E450 All-Terrain is a bit more driver-focused. However, you're paying a lot more money for this E450 All-Terrain than you are for the V90 Cross Country. And while driving dynamics are nice and all, personally, I don't really think it's worth it. I'd much rather save the money and get myself the V90 Cross Country. However, compared to their SUV counterparts, I think that both of them are better. They both have pretty much the same amount of space on the inside. They're both much more engaging to drive than the XC90 and the GLE 450. They're both more fuel efficient than those SUVs. They can both be equipped with the same amount of gadgets and gizmos. And you're pretty much paying the same or even less money than their SUV counterparts. So if you do have your eye on an XC90 or the GLE 450, do me a favor, put down the brochure and go to your local dealership and see if you can test drive one of these. I think that you will be very pleasantly surprised. And if you want to know more about either of these two station wagons, I wrote a more detailed comparison review of them over on my website. You can find that link in the video description or click on the pop-up banner up here. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely it'll probably be an SUV. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.